you have to ask yourself, if God is a God of infinite forgiveness, why hasn't he let you back into the Garden of Eden? This could be fun. If humans have dominion, does that mean you have to do anything, I ask? I like where you're going with this, but just because you happen to have dominion over that hungry tiger doesn't mean that that tiger won't eat you if she can. This is Brian from Ivy Acres Homestead. I'm here with my invisible friend, Shenanigan, the forest fairy. I'll have to speak out loud what you can't hear her say. The other day, Shenanigan, I saw you dancing in a, in a different kind of way. You were using more hand gestures and you were looking around in a ceremonial, elegant sort of way. Can you tell me a little bit more about that dance? That was songline dancing. It's how we connect with our ancient ancestors. Could you hear the music I was dancing to? No. That is a pity. I was sure you were one of the rare humans who could see and hear us when we allow you to. But I had hoped that you might be able to hear the music of magic too. Songline dancing is unique. We must first dance in order to hear that music. My looking around was me listening for the music. It reveals our ancestors' first-hand experiences, their thoughts about life and important events. It's called songline but it's really the dance that represents our ancestors' journey. Is it a two-way communication? No, it's only a record of the past. Well, we use literature and sometimes technology for that. I guess these YouTube videos are kind of a song line in that sense. She looks a little skeptical, but she's not arguing the point. So it's rare that humans are compatible with fairies. It also sounds like there's a spectrum of compatibility. Just how, just how often will someone as compatible as me come along? Really, perhaps just once every couple hundred years. History for you must be just like remembering what happened yesterday. Do you just peruse the eons for fun? What, what life experiences would a naughty little forest fairy like you be interested in anyway? I do it from time to time when I feel nostalgic. There are, however, some holidays and ceremonies dedicated to honoring the ancestors. Much of our lives are lived exactly as they always have been 
So I wouldn't say there's anything titillating or voyeuristic about the song line. Actually, I think my own life is more interesting than a lot of those old fuddy-duddies. There are natural disasters and great human-caused change in the world from history that I find interesting. Can you keep anything private? Do you have to decide to allow your song line to be accessible on this fairy collective unconscious? Can you listen in on any fairy or just ones you're related to? Is the song line streamed continuously or is it just, I don't know, uploaded and made public when one of you dies? You ask a lot of funny questions. We can be private if we want to, but who would want to see something that somebody else wouldn't want to show? Song lines only work along direct ancestry, but all fairies are related, and it's very easy for us to trace back to the very beginning. There are other ways for us to share among living fairies who we don't descend from, and gifting the song line is the last thing we do. It helps us put our lives into perspective. Now I have to ask, what was the beginning all about? <sighs> the mysteries of good light may not be easy to accept, it sounds like this video is going to be deeper than I thought it would. Please do explain about the good light. I can handle it. If anyone out there watching can't, they can always watch something else on YouTube. A lot of what Shenanigan recounted was the euphoric first taste of good light. She went on and on about it with some fairly comic pantomiming. I didn't really get it. I guess it's like trying to describe the color red to someone who has always been blind. Trust me, it'll be faster if I just paraphrase and summarize what I did understand rather than repeat what she actually said. Good light is another way to describe magic. It's different from regular light. Although, when regular light is especially beautiful, it can also be good light. Human love is good light. Beautiful places in nature are good light. The whole earth is sacred, and as such, any place here can be a wellspring of magic if it's perceived as being sacred. Why do you qualify that only human love can be magic? I presume fairies love just like we do, so why isn't your love also magic? It has to do with the fact that God loved humans first. Eden was real. Eden still is real. You have to ask yourself, if God is a God of infinite forgiveness, why hasn't he let you back into the Garden of Eden? God never had to cast the fairies out of the garden, and they're still there. When God cast us out of the garden, he did not, however, revoke our dominion over all of creation. It's ironic. Humans who can no longer know the true nature of magic, can be a source of it, while fairies, who do know magic, can't create it themselves. When fairies open up to good light, it passes through them. They can focus it like a lens or fan out the spectrum like a prism, but usually they just amplify the magic 
and shine it back into the world. Why do you think God hasn't let us back in the garden? Humans just weren't well suited for this paradise. I think the meaning of your lives, the ways you can find purpose, must just be a more basic and practical struggle for existence. I think God always understood this and just wanted Adam and Eve to figure it out on their own. Where is Eden? Eden is everywhere humans have ever been. It's where we live as fairies. Our worlds overlap, but our realities are very, very different. We can't actually go anywhere humans haven't been. It's one of those rules of primary dominion things. This could be fun. If humans have dominion, does that mean you have to do anything, I ask? I like where you're going with this, but just because you happen to have dominion over that hungry tiger doesn't mean that that tiger won't eat you if she can. So in 1969, we went to the moon. Many of us went up there too. The moon is a lifeless rock and magic usually flows around life, but the moon is special. It's such a silent, majestic beauty up there. And the wonder that humans have always held for the moon has a taste all of its own. So one puff of magic doesn't taste pretty much like any other puff of magic. <sighs> magic is a stream, not a bag of Cheetos. All of the wavelengths of good light taste a little different. Take it from me, the magic from you tastes very different from the magic of anyone else. Just what sort of story, Shenanigan, do you think your songline will be? A great romance? Some swashbuckling adventure? A bittersweet tragedy? perhaps a comedy. Who can say? It has taken a very interesting twist since I met you, though. I know I can't hear the music that your songline dancing evokes, but the dance itself is really quite lovely. Why didn't you call it a dance line? She says, dance line sounds a little too much like a, a burlesque chorus line of showgirls all kicking in unison. And now she's changed clothes. She's got a feathered headdress on with two big feathered fans fluttering in front of her and it doesn't look like she has much of anything else on. Why well, yes I do like this new dance. Oh my, I do like this new dance.